When I read Atlas Shrugged, I was captivated. There were complicated romantic relationships, alliances and treachery, heroes who overcame obstacles, villains who tried to stop them, and an intriguing question that seemed to be behind it all. Who is John Galt? And yet, it was unlike anything I had ever read before. My response was far from unique. From CEOs to college students to celebrities, people declare that reading Ayn Rand's novel has a life-changing effect. Why? Well, through her story and characters, Ayn Rand turns conventional thinking on its head. Which businessman would you expect to be a hero? The publicly spirited CEO, James Taggart, who calls for corporations to give back to the community and fights for business to be regulated in the name of the public good? Or would the hero be the wealthy entrepreneur, Hank Reardon? who proudly seeks to generate as much profit as possible, the public interest be damned. James Taggart, right? Not in Ayn Rand's world. Ayn Rand's heroes are ambitious capitalists, unapologetically pursuing money and success. There is Hank Reardon, the industrialist who creates a new metal that is stronger, safer, and cheaper than anything else on the market. There is Dagny Taggart, the executive who risks everything on her own judgment in order to build a great railroad. Both want to make as much profit as possible by perfecting their products. In today's world, as an atlas, such people are criticized as selfish and greedy. In today's world, as an atlas, antitrust lawsuits and controls to rein in their greed are brought against such people. But in Ayn Rand's world, when the capitalists are faced with these attacks, we see these people as persecuted victims, not wrongdoers. When the novel's heroes learn that they should not feel guilt in the face of irrational demands, even if the demand comes from your mother, who is nagging you to give your shiftless brother a job he does not deserve, we learn that lesson too. When the heroes learn to stand up for the right to their own lives and happiness, the public interest be damned. And even if this means you will be denounced by your family, colleagues, and the public for refusing to sacrifice yourself, we learn the lesson too. When the novel's heroes refuse to be sacrificial lambs, we come to agree with their reasons. And so, as readers, sometimes against our previous beliefs, we side with Ayn Rand's heroes and want to see them overcome their opponents. After Hank Reardon invests millions and his very soul into creating Reardon Metal, a product that really could revolutionize industry and rescue the economy, the response is a concerted effort to keep the metal off the market. Worse, when its value is grudgingly recognized, people demand subsidized access to it in the name of the public good. How completely unjust we think in outrage. And we rally behind the proud, profit-seeking man. We become invested in his success. What our priests and teachers taught us was immoral, Ayn Rand boldly presents as heroic. And we wish we could meet her heroes in real life. By introducing us to a new kind of hero, Ayn Rand challenges our own thinking. Maybe, just maybe, we've been pursuing the wrong ideals in life. Should I pursue a career in business to make money or so that I have something to give away? Should I be a doctor because I have an obligation to help the needy? Or because I love the subject and have exceptional skills and training to trade with patients willing to pay me? Should I be proud of the money I've earned? Or should I feel guilty because others have less? Am I required to accept religious doctrine on faith? Or are there other standards by which I can determine right from wrong? For Ayn Rand's characters, the answers to these questions are vital to their happiness, and it is a betrayal of self not to ask them. 
But Ayn Rand didn't simply raise thought-provoking questions. Through her dramatic story, she shows us exactly where she stands and why. Hank Reardon has an inalienable right to sell his product at whatever price his buyers are willing to pay. It's his property and the result of his creative effort, the product of his reasoning mind. And no person, nor the whole of society, can stake a claim upon it. James Taggart, who calls for the producers to altruistically support the unproductive, well, in fact, he is morally bankrupt. His motivation for pursuing the undefined and indefinable public interest is to gain power. He can't earn it, so he has to grab it. Before Atlas Shrugged, most of us could not have conceived of a Hank Reardon as heroic and a James Taggart as depraved. Yet, there it was. How did Ayn Rand reach us with such impact? Well, her challenge to conventional thinking and her philosophical answers come in the form of an intricately woven literary masterpiece. She writes of people who act on their judgment, who have experienced joy and loss, who have to figure out the answers for themselves just as we need to. Presented in the form of a riveting story, we can be inspired by her new ideas, see their concrete meaning, and apply them to our own lives. This is the reason Atlas Shrugged has had a lasting impact on so many people in the past 50 years. <laughs>